Good morning, Marlon. Good morning, Marlon. Song says, I don't have a closet religion. I don't have a closet religion. Amen. If you would, uh, if you look at your program, what, what we have done is just copied an old program from years ago just to get you back to them old days. And you look on the back, we see all these people that have gone on home. And that's all it is. It's not that we uh, gave you an old program to go by today, but just what we want to do something to just uh, make you think about what, what all has, has already transpired. Amen? Y'all ain't talking back to me. You know I'm kind of hard to hear, and I guess. Huh? Now, we're not going to prolong any time. We are going to ask our deacons to come on and get us started in our devotion. You don't put nothing in, you can't get nothing out. Huh? We got to put something in to get something out, y'all. Good morning, Mount Olive. Let us stand for the reading of God's word. We're going to the book of Psalm number 100, verses 1 through 5. word of God says make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye lands serve the Lord with gladness come before his presence with singing know ye that the Lord he is God it is he that has made us and not we ourselves we are his people and the sheep of his pasture enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise be thankful unto him and bless his name for the lord is good his mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations may the lord add a blessing to the readers hearers and doers of his holy word Good morning. Welcome to Black History Sunday. Yeah. I see everybody in their attire. You look like you, some of you look like you just come off a farm. If you hold your hands up, you probably got thorns and splinters and all that good stuff where you had to work so hard. Yeah. And, uh, church say amen good to be in the house of the Lord one more time amen as we celebrate our black history back in the day it the best I can do throwback when I was a little boy I always wanted to stand before a church and sing this song Lord Lord My 
my wife told me, said, when you don't know the word, you can just say the alphabet, A-E-I-O-U. A never dying soul to say and fitted for the sky. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 die. So to say and feel it for Take the stain that old mean stain. Take the stain that old sinful stain. Take the stain of guilt away and own me as that child. Oh, take, oh Lord, the, the stain, Lord, of, of guilt, of, Away and, and on me, me and the child. All y'all can help me with this part. Every now and then, I like to get off by myself. They say, when you moan, the devil don't know what you're talking about. But I beg the difference, because the devil, he's a smart, and he knows a lot of things. So when I talk to the Lord, I, I don't care if the devil knows. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can I make up another song? I don't know. What, what Jesus would ease to you, but I, I hope he is to you what he is to me. He. He's all I want to own. Oh, he's my chief. He's my cornerstone. I'm so glad I know what, what Jesus, oh Lord, what he is to me. I'm glad salvation, oh Lord, shine free. I'm glad, anybody here glad this morning? Salvation is free.
free salvation. Oh, it's free for you. me I'm, I'm so glad shines free yes yes Lord down on my bending knees Heavenly Father, Lord, we just want to thank you today, Heavenly Father, for just gathering together, Heavenly Father, on this special day. Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for your grace and mercy. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for just letting everyone just come out in good health, Heavenly Father, just to praise your holy name. And Heavenly Father, we just say thank you, Heavenly Father. Continue to bless the church, Heavenly Father. Continue to bless the pastor. Continue to bless his wife, Heavenly Father. Continue to bless my wife, Lord. Yeah. Continue, Lord, just to bless everyone, Heavenly Father, that leaning and depending on you for one thing or another. Yeah. But, Lord, we need you. Lord, we need you right now, Heavenly Father. Lord, we need you on the job. We need you on the, uh, everyone, everywhere, Lord. Just continue, Lord, just to guide us in the right direction, Heavenly Father. Yeah. To continue, Lord, just to pour out your loving kindness um, everything, Lord, just continue, Lord, just to bless us, Heavenly Father. And we just want to just say thank you. Thank you. In your precious Son, Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Come on, praise Him like you mean it. Praise Him like He woke you up this morning. Praise him like he allowed you to lay down last night. Praise him like that. Can you do that? I see. I hear some clapping, but it seemed like I all hear. They used to say back in the day they didn't have no music. They would just they would just strike out and start singing old songs. Say, just another day that my Lord, my Lord has kept me. Yes, it is just another day that I. I've been in my Savior's care. Yes, it is. Wanna say he through through his love in arms all around. Y'all remember that? Yes, sir. Yes, he did. And there I found peace joy right there hey you hear somebody come out of the background out of nowhere oh, another day I've been working in God been yours yes I have Another day, you know he kept me by his side. Oh yeah, he said I know just how hard you've been laboring. Said I want you sit down and rest a while. Yeah. Oh yeah. I heard him say, 
just another day. Yeah. I know he kept me yeah, by his side. Oh, yeah. I yesterday and he kept me on the day before I don't know about you see you might have thought that alarm clock woke you up this morning but I got news for you that alarm clock didn't do it it was by God's grace that you're here today a whole lot of folks wish they could be here today but they somewhere else all night in their right mind but he kept you what Have you any rivers that seem uncrossable? Right now we're going to have our scripture reading led by Minister Peabody. It's on the inside of your program. I greet you in the matchless name of Jesus this morning. The scripture reading is also in the hymn book number 572. I'm going to wait till you settle down. Amen. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you. To, to you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Whereby are given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wherefore, the, the rather brethren give diligence to make you your calling and election sure F for if ye do these things ye shall never fail ye therefore beloved seeing ye know these things before Beware, lest you also being led away with the error of the wicked. Fall from your own steadfastness.
Amen. For every hearer and doer of the word, in Jesus' name, amen. Let the church say amen. In the Old Testament book of Genesis chapter 7, God flooded this world. But he promised never to do it by water again. He said next time it won't be water, but fire yes, sir. next time. Lord. It's gonna rain. It's gonna rain. You better get ready. That isn't mine. God showed Noah. Showed him the rainbow. He said it won't be. It's gonna be fire. Let's say it again, y'all. It's gonna rain. It's gonna rain. You better get ready. And bad is in my God showed no showed him the rainbow. He said it won't be it's gonna be fire. Listen, we back in the Bible days. Noah told the people it's gonna rain. But when he told them, they paid him no mind. And when it happened, they got left behind. I tell you, it's gonna rain. It's gonna rain. It's gonna rain. You better get ready. Get ready. And that is in my God showed no showed him the rainbow. He said it won't be It's gonna be fire. Listen, Noah told the people in plenty of time. But they were too sinful and they were too blind. And when it came that awful day, they tried to pray, but their prayer was too late. Get ready. It's gonna rain. It's gonna rain. It's gonna rain. Lord, you better get ready. And that is in my God showed no showed him the rainbow. He said it won't be it's gonna be fine. Well, they tell me when the water begin to pour. Listen, they knocked on the windows, they knocked on the door. They didn't know exactly what to do. Now you don't want this to happen to you. Get your house in order. It's gonna rain. It's gonna rain. It's gonna you rain. better get ready. Get ready. And that is in my God showed no. Showed him the rainbow. He said it won't be warm. It's gonna be fine. Let me tell you what Noah said. Noah said, I'm sorry, my friend. God's got the key and you can't get in. If something don't happen to the heart of man, the same thing is going to happen again. Get ready. It's going to rain. It's going to rain. It's going to rain. You better get ready. And that is in my God showed no showed him the rainbow. He said it won't be water. It's going to be fire. Let me say that verse one more time. Noah said, I'm sorry, my friend. God's got the key and you can't get in. If something don't happen to the heart of man, the same thing is going to happen again. I tell you, it's gonna rain. It's gonna rain. It's gonna rain. You better get ready. Better get ready. And that is in my God showed Noah. Showed him the rainbow. He said it won't be warm. 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 He said it won't be 
It's going to be fire. It's going to be fire next time. Get your house in order, y'all. It won't be water. It won't be for fire next time. Oh, yeah. He said it won't be water. He said it won't be water. He said it won't be water. He said it won't be one. Get your house in order. God is coming back again. He's going to buy a water the first time. This time it will be fine. He said it won't be one. He said it won't be water. But fire is it. God bless you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come this morning once again to say thank you. Asking that you'll forgive us and accept our gift. Lord, we don't come with a whole lot of fancy talk, but we come now asking you to bless not only our gifts, but bless us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let the church say amen. 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 Just another day that the Lord have given us. and We're just thankful for what he had done in all of our lives. Amen. Matter of fact, he woke all of us up this morning. Amen. amen. Closed us in our right mind. Amen. Gave you, in other words, a church going mind. Amen. amen. Are you glad to be in church today? Amen. Let's give God some praise for that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Believe it or not, this is my first time ever wearing overalls. Amen. I feel kind of different. Uh, amen. I remember seeing father-in-law and, you know, wear them and stuff. And it looked like they was quite comfortable on him, you know. It's like he's supposed to be wearing them. And everything, but it's different, amen. <laughs> I thought I'd take us back a little bit. Now, did I did I go back a little bit? Did I go wait? I went back. All right, amen. Y'all look good out there. Your dashikis and amen. All of your colors, you, you look good, amen. All right, to God be the glory. Uh, I have a thank you card from uh, Brother Mike Richmond. He said, Thank you so much. Your thoughts and prayers were felt and appreciated with love, Brother Mike Richmond. Amen. Amen. And also, I uh, got a phone call this morning from uh, Sister Moffitt uh, concerning uh, our mother of our church, Sister Olivia Hurd. I called uh, uh, Sister Hurd, her daughter, Miss Elena. I called her yesterday just to check on Miss Olivia. And uh, she was telling me that, you know, she had good days and she had bad days, not so good days. And said, But other than that, she was okay. And I think things were beginning to take a toll on as far as dementia or amnesia or whatever we call it. But, you know, but other than that, she was doing okay. But I got a call this morning from Sister Moffitt. And uh, Selena told her that she was taking her to the hospital this morning. She's in Piedmont, the one that used to be the medical center. She's in that hospital this morning. And so we don't know the extent of it, but we know God is able. Amen. So we solicit your prayers for the mother of our church, Sister Olivia Hurd. Amen. Amen. And also, Brother Jerome Grover, you know, he's, he's at home. And uh, Miss Tina Alexander. And uh, let me look for Deacon Tom Moffitt. Amen. And Sister Jesse Miles, amen. And of course, we know that uh, our little Miss Jalen Heron, amen. Uh, she, she's at home, and uh, her, mom, her mom is here. And so we just want to keep them in prayer, amen. amen. All of our sick and our shut in, amen. There's just so much going on, you know, as it relates to sickness and death, amen. Amen. And uh, lest I forget, Deacon uh, Terry Stringer, he's with us this morning. He was having to go through something, he had an ordeal. But he's here this morning. And uh, we just want to thank God for all of us. Amen, amen. Now, is there any first time visitors here this morning? Uh, would you stand and be recognized? Or you can just wave your hand. Your first time being here. Amen. All right, good to see you, my brother. You, you can say something to us if you like. If not, you... change. Okay. Glad to have you, Shane. All right. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. All right. Come on, my sister. Okay. All right, then. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. We're so very glad to have Pastor Pearl with us here this morning. Amen. In the first tabernacle family. Amen. Amen. Uh, when he texted me this morning, I know I had told him that uh, 
I, I wanted him to come and preach for me. And uh, when he texted me this morning, I said, oh, this is the morning he's supposed to come and preach then. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So that, that's, that's my bad. But hey, still, Pastor Pearl is a dynamic preacher. And I had told him I wanted him to come and preach for us because they were so very nice to us when we went to do his anniversary. Amen. And so he is here. Let's give him a hand. Amen. Amen. Y'all looking good in these rainbow of colors. Amen. Amen. Let's give this male course a hand. Amen. Glad to have Brother McKnight back with us. Amen. He's been traveling. Yeah. Having to deal with his, his loved one and going and celebrating them. Uh, amen. He was in New Orleans in one week and then you had to travel to Florida the next week. Amen. But God brought you back safe and sound. Amen. Thank God for our ushers who's holding down the door. All right. Glad to have you back, Mike. Glad to have you back, my brother. Amen. And of course, our musicians. And Brother Mike. Brother Al. Brother Al. Amen. I have to separate him from them because he feels as if, you know, he's special. And so, so I want to make him feel special. So you're special. Amen. Amen. You're on your way to, to college this year in May, July. You leave in July. Amen. All right. So we got a little while to love on you. Amen. In July, you're going this. And that's a good thing. You know, he's aspiring to go higher. He's aspiring to go higher. Amen. To God be the glory. All right. We got our announcements at this time. All right, come on, announcements. They're doing it the old time way. Yeah, you know how we used to do it. Amen. Y'all ain't forgot that either. Okay, all right. Good morning, everyone. We'd like to thank everyone for participating in our old school Sunday service. So our announcement's going to be by Sister Beulah May Stokes. You've probably seen it on the program. She is a member, but she just been watching online. So I said, you need to come back to church because you cannot do no announcements online. You need to come in to the church so we can see you. So at this time, we're asking Sister Beulah May Stokes. She told me to say her whole name. Beulah May Stokes. Would you please come out? I'm trying to come. Where you at, Beulah? Come on now. Good morning. Good morning. It's on. You just got to talk in it so they can hear you, Miss Beulah. Let me help you. Good morning, my darling. Y'all bear with me, I done got old now. They don't ask me to come until it's black history. You got it, Miss Bueller? Yeah, I, babe, I think I can get it for sure. You looking mighty, mighty fine. Yeah, I almost didn't recognize you. Well, that's what my husband told me, too. Uh, Good morning again. Good morning. Oh, y'all, y'all bear with me. Okay. Now we're going to have the church announcements. Sister Jacobs and Sister Washington asking that you please, please, get your announcements in before Sunday morning. If not, they will be read when we meet again. And that's on Wednesday night at Bible study. So if you want to hear your announcement, come to Bible study Wednesday night. That's at 6 o'clock p.m. Deacon Stringer is asking that everyone please clean your car tires and your truck tires before coming in the parking lot. We just got it done and they wanted to last this time. 
And due to all the commotion going on, the youth department is asking all members to wear boots on Fifth Sunday. Wear your boots, cowboy boots, rain boots, whatever kind of boots you got. The choir gonna be singing stomp and they wanna stomp the devil out. <laughs> on Sunday, February the 25th, we will be having all ministry day. Now that program will be at two o'clock. Don't y'all go home and don't come back. We wanna support everybody. Now this last announcement was given to me when I was on my way in the back door. I should wait till Bible study to read it. But because of who it is, I'm going to go ahead and read it. The pastor, <laughs> Rev. McCauley and Sister McCauley. Wave your hand, let everybody see you, sweetheart. Well, they would like to take all members to Texas Roadhouse. I heard they just opened up a new one in Overlife. Now you can order whatever you want. They gonna make sure you get there, but you got to pay for it yourself. Now that's on the fifth Sunday of this month. Y'all write that down. Now at this time, we're gonna have our birthdays and anniversaries. The first one we have is Deacon Thomas and Luke celebrating a birthday on Tuesday. Y'all. The next one we have is an anniversary. Deacon Dun, Dun Bay. what is it? What is a baby? Donovan Washington and Minister Rosie, Rosie Washington celebrating five years. Let's get him a hand. Now, that ends the announcement, but you know, I done got old. I used to sing in the choir. Choir director told me I couldn't sing no more. But they done gave me the mic today, y'all. So I'm going to sing my song. I don't, I, don't even, I don't even see the director. She ain't even here today. Something got a hold of me. Oh, yes, it did. I said something got a hold of me. Yeah, I went to a meeting one night And my heart wasn't right Yeah, but something got a hold of me It was at a revival on the morning bench Sin had me filled with misery. The same God that touched my mother laid his hands on me. Ooh, yeah, I said something got a hold of me. Oh, yes, it did. I said something got a hold of me mm -hmm, yeah and to a meeting one night and my heart wasn't right yeah but something got a hold of me it seems to me there was a voice and I thought it was speaking to me. The same God that touched my mother laid his hands on me. Ooh, yeah, I said something got a hold of me. Oh, yes, it did. I said something. 
mm-hmm, got a hold of me. Mm-hmm, yeah, I went to a meeting one night and my heart wasn't right. Yeah, but something got a hold of me. And oh, it was the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost made me, Holy Ghost walk right, Holy made me, Holy Ghost live right, Holy Ghost and oh, something got a hold of me. Oh, yes, it did. I said something got a hold of me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I went to a meeting one night, and my heart wasn't right. Yeah, but something got a hold of me. Now that ends the announcements. And now we're going to have a praise dance by the Mount Olive Youth Department. I've been walking with my face turned to the sun Weight on my shoulders A bullet in my gun Oh, I got eyes in the back of my head Just in case I have to run can for my people while the clouds roll back and the stars fill the night that's when I'm gonna stand up take my people with me together we are going to a brand new home far across the river can you hear freedom
of my hands. Come on. Our announcer, our praise team. Amen. Amen. You know, it's, it's always good to see our young people express themselves, most especially in the church. Amen. Because we know um, the world's version, what it is, if they get a hold of it, what the world can do to them. Amen. As it relates to their minds. Amen. Amen. But a mind is a terrible thing to waste. Amen. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. So it's always good to see them and let them express themselves in the church. Amen. Let's give God a hand. And let me thank God for our visitors once again. Thank God for you. Amen. Amen. And Pastor Stringer, he knows that it's always good to have him here with us and his wife. Amen. His family. It's good to see Sister Annetta. Amen. Sister Annetta. Amen. And I can say about Sister Frazier, I know she has some complications and what have you, but she, she's here. Amen? Good. She's here. You know? And that's what a lot of us, you know, throughout the course of a week, we may be going through something, whether it's mentally, whether it's physical, whether it's spiritual. Amen. But you make your way to the church house of God. Amen. Because you know you know that God has something in store for you. Amen. You know what? I've come to the conclusion that the church is nothing more than a, a big, I know it's called a house of prayer, but this is a big old hospital. Amen. Well, it can treat all of us. Amen. And then somebody equated it uh, to a, a big washing machine. Amen. We, all, we get in there together. We put a little this and that in it. And it comes out in the rinse. Amen. But can't nobody do us like Jesus. What can wash away all my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. That's what it's all about. You got all of these colors in here. But when you put the blood of Jesus on it. He's able to make it whiter than snow. Amen. 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 All right. Come on, May, of course. We're waiting on you. We don't want you to get lax on us. We want to keep you going. That's right. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Then we can tell him all about our trouble. He will hear our faintest cry. And we will answer by and by. Then you can feel a little prayer will turn. And then you should know that the fire is burning. Then we can have a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Then we can tell him all about our trouble. He will hear our faintest cry. And he will answer by and by. By that time you should feel a little prayer. And we have a little talk with Jesus makes it right. I once was lost in sin, and Jesus took me in. Then a little light, then a little light from heaven filled my soul. What did it feel me? It filled my heart with love And he wrote my name above 
And we'll just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Then we can tell him all about our trouble. He will hear our pain and cry. And the Lord will answer by and by. By that time you should feel a little prayer will turn it. Then you will know that the fire's burning. And we'll have a little talk with Jesus makes it right. He'll make it all 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 right. Whatever you're going through, church, he'll make it. He'll make it all right. 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 Who you talking about, look, Jesus? He'll make it all right. Who am I talking about, church? Jesus. He'll make it all right. Oh, Jesus. He'll make it all right. He'll make it all right. He'll make it all right. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Then. Can tell him all about our trouble. And he will hear our pain and cry. He will answer by and by. By that time we can feel the prayer will turn. It. Then we shall know that the fire is burning. And we'll have a little talk with Jesus. Makes it right. Go here. Come on in my room. Come on, y'all. Come on in my room. Y'all know it. Jesus, he is my doctor. And he writes down all of my scripture. Give me all of my medicine. Joy in the room. Yes, sir. Come on now. Joy in the room. Yeah. Jesus is my doctor. And he writes down all of my scripture. And he gives me all of my medicine in my room. Oh, there is the room. Come on, y'all. There's peace y'all know it's in the room. Oh, Jesus is my doctor. And he writes out all of my scripture. And he gives me all of my medicine in my room. One more. Oh, there's healing in my room. Come on now. Healing in my room. Yeah, Jesus is my doctor. And he writes out all of my scripture. And he gives me all of my medicine in my room. Come on, let's give God some praise. Amen, amen. Well, it is preaching time. Amen. And I know that we have someone here who is able to preach, who is able to teach. Amen. Now, I haven't heard him sing his own song, but perhaps he may be able to do that. I don't know. 
Amen. But I'm so very glad to have him here with us this morning to bring a word from the Lord. Amen. Amen. I want to thank God for all of you, you who are listeners now. I want you to listen and see if there's something in this word that is detailed for you, that is tailor-made for you. Amen. I don't know what you're going through. Amen. But I do know that you are going through. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. So I'm going to let Pastor Pearl come in his own way. Amen. Amen. Come on, elevate your right hand. Pastor Pearl, Pearl. preach the word. word. Come on. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord, church. Truly, it's a blessing to be with you today. Normally, my wife would be with me, but she's under the weather. She's not here in person, but she is here. By the way, it's really good that they gave us all these social media channels. So she is with us, but she's not here in person. But truly, we thank God for allowing us to be here today. Every third Sunday, I give my associates a chance to carry on. And that gives me a chance to go somewhere else. Because sometimes we need to be preached to all. But we just thank God for allowing us to be here. And Pastor, I don't say. I would cut out the say, but I wouldn't sold up right. Normally when she's with me, she do the same. <laughs> Amen. Well, we just thank God for allowing us to be here, not going to prolong the time. Uh, I bring you greetings from First Tabernacle Baptist Church in Phoenix City, where I am the pastor and have been for 21 years. So we thank God for allowing us to be here with you today. Uh, if you have your Bible, iPads, your tablets, whatever you may have. And, and if you got your phone, please turn it on silent or vibrate. Amen. And the first tabernacle, the phone rang, they had to be here 25 hours. Yeah. So, so they always turn it off because don't nobody want to give. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, I want you to go with me to the book of Acts. That's when we collect this $25 year. <laughs> Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. It's a familiar passage of scripture. Acts chapter 9. This ain't first tabernacle, but I don't know. <laughs> Acts chapter 9, and we're starting at verse number 1. And it reads, And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him a letter to Damascus, the synagogue, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth, and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. 
it is hard for thee to kick against the prick. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Father, we come right now with thanksgiving in our hearts. We pray, Heavenly Father, that your word minister to your people. Heavenly Father, we ask you to open our hearts and minds, Heavenly Father, that they re may receive and retain that word which comes from you. These and all blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. And if you bear with me for just a little while, I want to speak to you on the text when Jesus stepped in to my story. When Jesus stepped into my story. You know the story of Saul and how Saul was persecuting the church. But if we would just back up just a little bit, we find that Saul has just left the stoning pit where they were stoning Stephen. And Saul was one that stood up on the mountain with his arms folded. And as he stood there, everyone would lay down their coats and pick up a brick. And they would stone Stephen. And yet, while they were stoning him, St Stephen didn't curse them. Stephen didn't talk about them while they were stoning him. But what Stephen did was he looked up toward heaven and, and he told his father, the father, forgive them for what they are doing. Now, Saul looking at Stephen, and while he's looking at Stephen, he's wondering how is it that a man that we're stoning to death, a man that, 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 that we're killing, how is it that he can look to his God and tell his God to forgive us? All right, yeah. What kind of man is this that, that would ask his God to forgive us for what we are doing to him? Now, this troubles Saul, and, and, and because it troubles Saul, now Saul is going home, and as Saul go home, uh, he got it in his mind about this man that we are killing, asking God to forgive him. And it's troubling his mind, and you know when your mind is troubled, you look for some kind of way to ease your mind. And so now Saul in order to ease his mind, he goes to the high priest. And he's trying, now, now, I got to stop these folks because all of these folk here is, is crying out to their God and they're not crying out to their God to do anything to us but to forgive us. This is mind-boggling to me. It, it's mind-boggling. I, I don't know how it is that he could ask for forgiveness for me. So he goes to the high priest, and when he gets to the high priest, y'all going to see where I'm going in a minute. When he gets to the high priest, the high priest, he asks for a letter that he can go and, and bring back those that are following after the way. And, and Pastor, well, who is he talking about? Who is he talking about? Jesus said, I am the way. Now, Saul gets a letter from the high priest. The high priest has given him his marching order. And as the high priest give him his marching order, Saul is on his way with his marching orders in his hand. But ain't it something when God is on your side, I, I don't care who's after you, they can't do nothing to you. The Bible said thousands should come up against you, but not one will be able to take how many of us today, when somebody is talking about us, how many of us today would just look up and tell the Lord, Lord, forgive them? How many of us, when people are mistreating us, would just look up and say, Lord, forgive them? Look at Saul. Saul here. He, he's got his letter and he's marching up, up, up the road and he's looking for 
those that are following after Jesus. But, but watch this, y'all. Whatever the devil means for good, God will take it and turn it around. Well, whenever he's trying to do something bad, God makes it good. So Saul is marching. His marching orders in his hand. Going up Damascus Road. And as he gets up Damascus Road, he wants to persecute the church. He's got his marching order. And he's on his way. The Bible said, and as he went, everywhere he went, said the Christian folk, the godly folk, everywhere he went, because he was going from house to house, Everywhere he went, the people would move out and go somewhere else. But they didn't just go, but they took the message with them. Hmm. And as they took the message with them, the Bible says it was like throwing a rock in the water and to rip the way the waves are. Watch this. If you throw a rock in the water, you can see the waves for a little while. But watch this, the waves still don't stop. The waves keep going even when you can't see it no more. And that's how the, the Christianity spread it because Saul was coming and they were spreading. But watch this. Watch this. As Saul got on down Damascus Road, something happened to Saul. When Saul got near Damascus, the Bible says that, that, that a light shine from heaven. A light shine from heaven and, and, and it was so bright that it blinded Saul. Now some of us, some of us, some of us are, 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 have worked in, in the welding field and some of us have, have done things to where you got a lot of bright light and that bright light, when, when, that, when you get around that bright light, it'll dry your eyes out. And this is what's happened to Saul along the way. His eyes are dried out and the Bible says something came over his eyes like scales. And Saul fell down because he knew that it was somebody that was more powerful or had more authority than he did. And because he, he knew that he had more authority, then watch this, y'all. Saul was one that everything he wanted, he had. Saul was one that could speak a word and people would be killed or people would bring in all they had and give it to him just at his word. But now he's on Damascus Road and he finds somebody that has more authority than he has. And because they have more authority than he has, the Bible says he heard a word. He heard a word. And when he heard a word, Saul, Saul didn't know who it was. I heard somebody say one time, he even know the Lord. No, he didn't know him. That's why he said, Lord. Because in that day, if they had power, they were called Lord. Who art thou, Lord? He said, I'm Jesus, whom thou persecuted. And Jesus here steps into Saul's story. And when he stepped into Saul's story, Saul was going to do what he wanted, but Jesus came and changed his story. Not only did he change his story, but he also changed his marching order. He, he changed Saul's marching orders, and instead of Saul going to persecute the church, he, he is now one that, that is going and, and he's fighting for the church. When Jesus steps into your story, he changes everything about you. When Jesus stepped into your story, he changed even your mind. There are some folk right here that Jesus has stepped into.
into your story because of your worries. He stepped into your story because of your sickness. He stepped into your story because of your pain. He stepped into your story because you're being mistreated and abused. And when he steps into your story, your problem don't seem like a problem but a situation. Is there anybody in here that have had to call on him in the midnight hour? He, 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 when you call him, the Bible lets us know that he'll come and see about you. If you call him, he may not come when you want him, but he's always. When Jesus He changes some things. He get rid of some things. See, because a lot of times our problem is, is, is because we've got too much baggage. But when Jesus steps into your story, we can get rid of some of the baggage that we are carrying. Because a lot of times it's just baggage that somebody else done dumped on you. When Jesus steps into your story, he changes even your attitude. Watch this. Saul is standing there. And because Jesus has stepped into his story, he has to go back and he got to bow down like a little child. A powerful man like Saul now has to be carried like a little child into Damascus. The same God didn't change his direction. Yeah. He just changed his marching order. Yeah. He didn't go to a different place. He went to the same place, but he had a different attitude. I hear all the time people say, I'm not what I used to be. Huh? I don't go where I used to go. I, I, I don't say what I used to say. But watch this, church. When Jesus steps into your story, you can still go where you used to go, but you go with a different attitude. Huh? You go on a different mission now because Jesus stepped into your story and he changed your mindset. The Bible says he's a mind regulator. That's right. That's right. That's right. And because he's a mind regulator, yes. Yes. he deals with your mind. Yes. Yes. Hello, somebody. I, I know I know. a lot of times it talks about the heart of man, but when it's talking about the heart of man, it's talking about the mind. Huh? Y'all remember the, the, the story where Job was sick? Huh? Where Job was sick and, 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 and God told Satan, he said, you can touch anything on it, but don't mess with his mind. Because his mind is where he makes his decision. And you said that if, if, if you, I let you have Job, you'll make him curse me to my face. He said, so don't mess with his mind. When Jesus steps into your story, I don't care how bad your sickness is. If Jesus is in your story, he, he clears your mind so that you will know that you can still call on him. And when, he, when you call on him, he's guaranteed to come and see about you. And when, you, and when you're calling on him, you don't have to stay on your knees two or three hours because the Bible tells us that the most powerful prayer you can pray is, Lord, have Y'all remember the man on the side of the road? He didn't have a long prayer when he heard Jesus was coming by. Jesus stepped into his story and all he said was, Lord, have mercy on me. Huh? They told him, be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. Huh? Be quiet. You don't bother him right now. He, he's on his way somewhere. The more they told him to be quiet, the louder he got. Every now and then, us Christian folk need to get a little loud. Every now and then, we need to speak boldly and let it be known who we belong to. We're too quiet in our churches today. And because we're so quiet in the 
church is people are doing whatever they want to do. But if we are truly Christians, huh? If we are truly followers of Jesus the Christ, we should speak boldly about who we are. I, let me go back just a little bit. Let me go back. I, I remember when they was talking about taking prayer out of public places. I, I, I know we, we always lean on school, but they wanted prayer out of public places, period. Huh? They even went as far as, as, as uh, going to the courthouse, and, and they had the Lord's prayer, uh, or the model prayer in the courthouse, and they fought to even get that out the courthouse. Amen. Hello, somebody. Yeah. And, and because they fought to get that out of the courthouse, watch this. There was a young man and his mother, they, they decided, well, we're going to go and we're going to petition to get it out of school. Uh, I'm still in here, y'all. Uh, we're going to petition to get it out of school. And, and, and a boy and his mama petitioned to get it out of school. But watch this. Whatever the devil means for bad, God will take whatever it is and make it good. The young man's mother ended up leaving and they couldn't find her no more. And that young man that she had processed or put in his mind huh, that, that there is no God, he became a preacher and he began to preach the word of God. So don't tell me. Huh? When Jesus steps into your story, he'll change your marching order. And places, places that you wouldn't normally go, uh, you can go because he changed your mind and you go with a different attitude. Somebody say he changed everything about me. When I look at my hand, my hand look. When I look down at my feet, my feet did too. Uh, but you got the same hands and you got the same feet. But well, watch this, y'all. Those hands don't do what they used to do. Those feet don't carry you where you used to go. And if it do, it takes you with a different attitude. The thing that you see, huh? You don't see it the same way no more because Jesus stepped into your story. And when Jesus stepped into your story, you don't see the bad, but in every situation, you can see the good. The Bible lets us know that, that we got to stop listening to all of the negative things because when you listen to negative things, it will cause you to be negative. So when Jesus steps into your story, when you hear the negative, you can find some positive. Our speech, when Jesus steps into your story, your speech even changes. Because the Bible said, let your speech be seasoned with salt and full of grace. Yeah. Huh? Yes, so when Jesus steps into your story, you don't even talk the same way. All right. All right. Huh? Same mouth. Right. But you don't talk the same way you used to. Somebody curse you out instead of you, you, you uh, cursing them back out, you praying for them. Right. That, that was Stephen D. You see, St Stephen set an example of how we are to live. When somebody curse you out, turn it over to the Lord. You don't have to curse them out. You see, because when you get negative because they are negative, what you're doing is coming down to their level. But we need to bring them up to our level. So Saul, down on his knees. And, and, and while he's down on his knees, the men that are with him, huh? The men that are with him has to carry him by his hand like a little child. That's that, that why the Bible says, Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of heaven. And except you come as one of these little ones, you can't even enter into the kingdom. But watch this. Saul gets up and being carried by his friend. 
Jesus said to Saul, go down into the city and there you will be told what to do. Why didn't Jesus just tell him? Why didn't Jesus just tell Saul what he wanted him to do? But instead he told him, you go down to the city. And there you will be told what to do. Watch this, Pastor. They get him up and they take him down to the city. And while they're in the city, they go down to this man's house. This man called Ananias. And this man called Ananias was a preacher of the gospel. Watch this. Why is it that we feel that we can get to God and not go through the preacher? When Jesus stepped into our story, we know we got to go by the preacher because he, he said, I give you pastors after my own heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. So Saul had to go and be faithful. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Saul had to go and be fed by the preacher. And when Saul was fed by the preacher, he realized who Jesus truly is. When Jesus stepped into his story, Saul was carried like a baby. When Saul got down into the city, he couldn't even see until he went to the preacher. Hello, somebody. Y'all quiet on me. Hello, somebody. He couldn't see until he went to the preacher. And when he got to the preacher, the preacher began to lay hands on him. Yeah. What did our Bible tell us? When, when you're sick, when they're sick among you, seek the elders of the church and, and they will anoint you and they will lay hands on you. Huh? And they will pray for you. But we feel that I don't have to go to the preacher. I can get there by myself. I, I, I don't have to go to church. I don't have to go to church because now they got Facebook, they got TikTok, they got all these other. I don't have to go to church. I can look at it on TV. But watch this. If he give you pastors after him, I'm about to finish, y'all. If he give you pastors after his heart, huh, who will feed you with knowledge and understanding, if you're looking at TV, that food might not be for you. Hello, somebody. If you go to another church, that food may not be for you because the, he said, I'll give you pastors after my own heart who will feed you. Watch this. Have you ever went somewhere with mama when you were little? On sidebar. And you get to somebody's house. And mama tell you, if they ask you if you want something to eat, you better tell them no. Huh? I don't care how hungry you are. Baby, you want something to eat? No, ma'am. Well, that's what God is saying to us about the church. You can't... Church hop from church to church and think that you're being fed because when you leave your pastor's uh, presence and go somewhere else and you're eating food that might make you sick. But when Jesus steps into your story, you're going to stay under your pastor. When Jesus steps into your story, you're going to stay under your leadership. When Jesus steps into your story, you don't talk about your pastor, but you pray for him. When Jesus steps into your story, he, he gives you love. And when he gives you love, watch this, you can love those that talk about you. When Jesus steps into your story, he changes you. Now watch this. Watch this. How many times have you met old friends and you come back and you say, they done changed. 
they done changed. I, they, I don't mess with them no more. They done changed. Can I help somebody? When Jesus stepped into your story, they haven't changed. They're still doing the same thing they were doing, doing before. It's, it's just that you have changed. He, he has changed what you do and what you say. They still doing the same thing they were doing when y'all were together. Huh? But God has changed you from the inside out. And you don't have a desire to do the things you used to do. So don't think your friends are changed. They still the same. Huh? Now they're going to talk about you. They're going to say that you think you're better than somebody else. But watch this. Some of you go and holler, I'm not better than you. The devil is alive. Hello, somebody. The devil is alive. Huh? I don't think like you used to, like we used to think. I, I don't do like we used to do. I don't, I don't go where we used to go. So I am a little better. But I, I'm not going to put you down. But I just want to bring you up to where I am. You see, because if he did it for me, he'll also do it for you. Because Jesus stepped into my story. He had no respect of a person because he died for me and you. He didn't just die for me, but he died for me and you. And I'm so glad that over 2,000 years ago, he looked beyond the faults of us and he saw that we had a need. A lot of times we want things, but our wants and our needs are different. Saul had wants, but, but he didn't know that there was a need that couldn't be filled without Jesus. I'm so glad that he, he came down through 42 generations. I'm so glad that over 2,000 years ago, he came through the birth canals of a woman called Mary. I'm so glad that he walked the cobblestone roads of Judea. I'm so glad, I'm so glad that even when we said we love him, but then we cried crucify him, he didn't hold it against us. I'm so glad that after they took him from judgment hall to judgment hall, we took him, somebody missed that, we took him out of the judgment hall down in the lower part. We put a crown of thorns on his head, put a scarlet robe on his shoulder, crowning him Lord of Lord and King of Kings. The Bible says that after a while, we took the robe off of him, placed an old rugged cross on his shoulder. That cross represents your sins and mine. I'm so glad that he didn't say a word because the Bible says it's a time to speak and a time to be quiet. And Jesus knew exactly when it was his time to speak. The Bible says that they marched him up those cobblestone roads. And as he was marching up the cobblestone road, the Bible said our sins got a little heavy because the more he marched, the more we sinned. The Bible said it got so heavy so Jesus had to take a knee. I'm so glad he was down, but he wasn't out. The Bible lets us know that when we're in a situation, God will always send you a helper to help you along the way. The Bible says while Jesus was down on his knee, the Bible said they sent a man out of the crowd called Simeon. This man was there to help Jesus to bear the cross. They took that cross up a hill called Golgotha. The Bible says that he still haven't said a mumbling word. I'm so glad that he stayed quiet. The Bible says they took Jesus up that hill called Golgotha. They laid him down on that old 
cross. The Bible says he still ain't said nothing, Pastor. The Bible says he put nails in his hands and nails in his feet, and he still ain't said nothing. Because he know when it's his time to speak. The Bible says that, that Jesus had said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Nothing happened until he, they started to lift him up. The Bible says he still ain't said nothing, y'all. The Bible said when they started to lift him up, the sun stopped shining. The moon drifted away in blood. The earth began to reel and rock like a drunk man. They dug the hole deep enough so that when the cross went down into the hole, it was supposed to break the bones of men to hasten death. But the Bible says not one of his bones will be broken, nor will his body see corruption. The Bible lets us know in the book of Revelation, when the, when the cross went down in the hole, instead of breaking the bones of Jesus, it split the earth and fire and smoke came up out of the hole. I'm so glad that he still ain't said nothing. I'm so glad that he still being obedient to the Father. The Bible says that when God told him to speak, uh, the first thing he did was look for his mother. He had to redeem woman because his uh, Genesis, woman has been put down, but he had to redeem woman. Y'all to give yourselves a hand right there. The Bible says he looked for his mother. He got a special place in his heart for mothers. How many mothers do we have here today? He, he, he looked for his mother, and he told his mother, I got to take care of you first, mama. He said, uh, son, behold thy mother. Mother, behold thy son. What he's doing is he's telling his friend, take care of my mom. Take care of my mom. I, I got to finish my father's mission. Take care of my mama. The Bible said, and after he took care of his mother, the Bible said, now it's time for him to take care of you and me. The Bible says he looked up toward heaven and he told his father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Somebody missed a chance to shout right there. Forgive them for they know not what they do. The Bible says that after he had taken care of us, he cried, it is finished. Introduce himself to death laid his head in the locks of his shoulder, introduced himself to death. After he introduced himself to death, he took a nap in the grave. After he took a nap in the grave, he got up and went on into hell, unlocked the doors of hell, because hell has no place for you and for me, because he unlocked the door. The Bible said, and when Jesus went to hell, the Bible said even the graves opened up. Hello, somebody. The graves opened up and the people got out the grave and walked around. The Bible says that after he unlocked the doors of hell, the Bible said he came back through the grave and folded his burial clothes neatly. After he folded his burial clothes neatly, the Bible said he went back to death, introduced himself to death one more time. He began to cry, grave, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? The Bible lets us know that early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. Healing power, delivering power, saving power. He got up with all power in his hand. But that ain't the end of the story. Because we are people that believe what we see and not what we hear. So Jesus had to make it known to his disciples who were hiding. He had to make it known to his disciples who was hiding. So he told the women, he said, go tell my disciples and Peter to meet me. Somebody To meet me in Galilee. Women, don't let nobody tell y'all to be quiet in the church. Hello, somebody. A, a, a lot of time, a lot of time, a lot of time, children wouldn't get to church if it wasn't for you. I, I'm just trying to help somebody. The Bible says that Jesus went to Galilee 
and found his disciples where they were hiding, and he just walked right in. And he looked for you, and he looked for me, because we're in the spirit of Thomas. Thomas, see the nail prints in my hand. Thomas, see where they pierced me in my side. Thomas began to believe. But that ain't the end of the story. The Bible says he was walking down the road and he met two people. See, see, see. And, he to and they were telling him, you haven't heard what just happened. They crucified Jesus. Now Jesus done stepped into their story. And when he stepped into their story, he opened their eyes and they were able to see who he was. And the Bible says, when he opened their eyes, they knew who he was. And he told them, go and tell what you say. Go spread the gospel. What you've seen and what you've heard. And then he mounted a cloud. Went back to the farm. But church, he's coming back again. He's coming back again. And he's coming back for his church. The Bible said when he comes this time, he's going to crack the sky. And fire and brimstone going to rain down on this earth. I'm trying to quit, y'all. Fire and brimstone going to rain down on this earth. And everything down here going to be destroyed. Well, pastor, what's going to happen to us? The Bible lets us know that John said, I saw a new heaven and a new earth coming down as a bride adorned for her groom. And he said the saints of God will be caught up in there. The saints of God would be caught up in the air. But everything here is going to be destroyed. Huh? Don't you want to go where Jesus is? The Bible says when we get there, we're going to have a new name. The angels in heaven don't even know the name that God has for you. In the book of Revelation, it says it's on, written on a white. And at that time, your name will be revealed. I don't know about you, but I just want to know what name he has for me. I just want to know what name he has for me. And with that, I truly thank God for all of you. I thank God for allowing me to come. I thank you for accepting me. And with that, it's back in the hand. Door of the church is open. Door to God's house is open. When Jesus steps into your story, amen. He brings new inspiration, aspiration. Amen. He brings deliverance. Amen. You all have a whole new outlook on life. When Jesus steps into your story, amen. As the male course sing, amen. Would that be one? There's so much that the Lord come and give God your heart has done for me. Thanks, son. That I know He has. He's done so much for you and for me. Let me one. Set me free. Yes, it is. All of my burden, He helped me to bear. All of my sorrow, He helped me to share. I can't pay the law, but oh, I like to tell him, Lord, thank you, sir. Yes. Oh, I yes. thank you, sir, and I thank the Lord. Thank you, Lord. I, I thank the Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
today have you allowed Jesus to step in your story amen because Jesus makes the difference in all of our lives amen I want to thank Pastor Pearl First Tabernacle Ministry thank you so much sir amen he walked that text didn't he amen amen so now what I want us to do don't forget about when Jesus step into your story uh let us not forget about Saturday at 2 o'clock, our church conference, okay? Amen. If he steps in your, in your story, if he steps into your mind, amen? Amen. To God be the glory. Thank God for all of the preachers that share the roster. Remember Wiley, who's out in the audience. Thank God for all of you. Amen? I know it done got late in the evening, but the sun ain't going down. Amen. 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 Let us remember to pray for all of our sick and our shut-ins. Amen. Amen. And the bereaved families of this church, not only of this church, but our neighboring churches. Amen. Amen. Let us be in prayer for the Edmerson family. Uh, Pastor Willie T. Edmerson, if you've been watching Facebook, of the Bethlehem Missionary Baptist Church in West Point. Amen. God called him on home the other day. Amen. Willie T. Edmerson. Yes, he has passed. Yes. Yes, he has passed. Amen. Like I always say, we got a number, don't we? We have a number. So let's learn how to love one another. Treat each other with kindness. Amen. If they will allow you to. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Thank God for my wife here today with me today. Thank you, sweetheart. Amen. All of the visitors, we pray God to give you traveling grace back to your destination. Amen. All right. I'm going to allow Pastor Pearl to come back and give us Closing remarks and a benediction. Amen. Amen. Come on. Once again, we thank God for all of you receiving me. I want to ask that you remember the Pertle family in prayer. Uh, when you go down on your knees, don't forget about us. Like I said, Sister Pertle, she's she took sick during Thanksgiving and she's still going through. And I will be leaving here. I want you to pray for traveling grace for me. Uh, Sister Pertle is with her family and I'll be leaving here in the morning about five o'clock driving to Milwaukee, Wisconsin to eulogize my sister. So just keep us in your prayer. Amen? Amen? Because we know that prayer will win. No matter what the situation, prayer will win. Amen. Amen. And if there's nothing else, let us stand.
Our Father and our God, we come before you once again with thanksgiving in our hearts. We thank you, Father, for what our eyes have seen, ears have heard, hearts have felt. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for your Son, Jesus, allowing him to step into our story, Heavenly Father, to change our hearts. Father, we just thank you today and we give you all praises for your worthy. These and all blessings we do pray in your son Jesus' name. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ rest rule and abide with us henceforth now and forevermore. Let the whole church say amen. 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 God bless you. Go in peace.